welcome back. I'm going to be doing some wax melting. And this is just scented candles that my wife got and got tired of the smell. And well, I don't exactly like put just simply throwing this stuff away, so I melt it down and put in metal tubs like this and use them for various stuff to seal and so on. But I just got this single little propane one with a single burner on it and I made up a little metal gourd well a table so that I didn't fit just about anything on there and even these small little ones like this I can set up on there and be able to melt, melt the wax out of these and I already had one going but and this is actually pretty well melted down now I gotta get these uh, wicks out of here and it's just simple way of doing it I mean uh, I use this wax like I was saying for different types of sealer for uh, fire starting kits for uh, well just about anything that you can think of to be able to use it for anything that you need a whoop box up or and seal real well you can use this on there warm it up and put it on and whenever you do it like this yeah, I'll go ahead and get this poured out try to talk while I'm doing it uh, but whenever you're doing this and you want to try to save the glass you don't want to set the glass down yeah, you don't want to set the glass down on something that's really really cold because you will crack it. You're guaranteed to crack it. Well, I shouldn't say really, really cold. Anything that's detrimentally colder than what this is, than what the glass temperature is. Dad. Yeah. Yeah, Bubba. Me and Becky want to be with you. Okay, go ahead and come on out. Yeah, that way it doesn't crack in uh, on you and potentially break. Don't hurt me. And these little ones came with little lids. So I definitely want to keep these because I could use these for, well, little things. Bolts, nuts, washers, machine screws. Okay. Uh, and that, that sorts of stuff I could use uh, and put in here and be able to uh, close it up real well. So... I'll definitely be trying to keep these for sure. Those bigger ones I'm not going to keep, but nonetheless, I don't want it to break. So I'm going to have to try to prevent that. So, uh, hey, Becky, do not touch that, okay? Okay. Yeah, as I'm waiting for this next one, I want to discuss something a little bit and show you guys something, more or less. Uh, now, on my, especially my more recent videos, I've, here, let me, wait, so like on my more recent videos I've done about the small knives and the patoning and whatnot, and about the uh, full tang and small, uh, uh, small tang, uh, it's, let me show you a little bit here. Uh, this is the one of the ones I just did a little bit ago, actually. This is all the same day. But on this tracker knife, as you can tell, this is a full tang. The, the, the handle of it comes all the way out with the scales of the knife. And that there is a full tang and is definitely prime for uh, patoning and so on. Uh, then you have uh, ones that are partial tang. So like this one here, this, old, this Damascus Skinner that I have. This isn't just one I had rehandled. Uh, the blade was gifted to me and it was from a guy that, Becky, I know it's a plane, it's a plane up there. <laughs> 
But this, this Skinner was gifted to me by a guy I used to work with, and he had, uh, it, it was a stock removal knife, and it's it's not a full tang, it's, just, it's a partial tang, but here at the end, you can see it. But here on the outside, here and here, you cannot. And this is a partial tan. This would be all right for patani as well. And it should be just perfectly fine because you have more control. The tang is more, is all the way through, so you have more control over it and the less potential of it cracking. I'm starting to melt a little bit more. Ah. Then, you, then you have the one I done up too, the Sawzall blade one. Uh, this one I know for a fact is not even a full tank. It's not even hardly even a partial. It's just enough to stick inside the handle, and that's it. And with these ones, they're really hard to. Uh, I mean, anyways, really scared or skeptical about using them because I've seen these things bust off inside there. And that Mora knife that I've done up, it's I'm I don't know if it's if it's like that or not. But I know on this one. I'm really worried about this when I'm hitting it through it's just gonna twist out right there and but of course I'll, it'll have to be completely beating on it real hard and forcing it through instead of letting the knife do the work so like I said that's that's one way you can tell if you can't see the the metal in here of the handle if you can't see it at all there's a chance it's not a full tang but if you and if you can see it, like on this, you know uh, you know it's a full tank, or even like this one, you know it goes all the way through the handle. So uh, to me, anyways, if you uh, the full tang or even the partial tangs, like the ones I showed, the one I showed you on this Skinner, this Damascus Skinner, it, to me these are a lot better quality knives because. I know that they can take a lot of abuse because of it, and I'm not saying that these guys, these ones that don't have a full tang can't take abuse. I'm not saying that they can't, but for hard, heavy use, for just right up, up and beating it real bad, uh, I don't think it will take too much. You know, I said I've seen a lot of people bust them, and I've seen a lot of people try to do these as well, the little folder knives. I've seen them trying to baton these through as well. But uh you're you're like on this, you're putting all that force on that ooh, you're putting all that force on that center pin there. And that's just for me it's too much. So it's uh uh for me it's just one of those things. I don't like I don't like doing it. That's why I don't like doing it, I should say. So, I want to go ahead and... I uh, thought I was going to jab her on long enough to... Uh, this thing would be melted down already, but I'm not. But yeah, it, uh, with this setup here, using this wax, uh, I said you can use it to seal stuff. You can uh, do all kinds of things with it once you get it set up. Usually, whenever I do these up, I after I melt it down and put it into the cups like like this here, what I do is, uh, did somebody bonk their head? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, whenever I do them up like this, and they're still hot, yeah, and they're still hot. What I do is I put them in the fridge, and make them cool down that way. I'll let, I'll let them sit in there overnight and uh, that way they're, they become hard again. Just like, well, before I melt them down. So, as I use these primary, uh, I don't use them all the time because I'm kind of playing with this uh, fire starting kit that I have, that I've been making. Uh, so I'm I may not be using them, using it that much for that. I uh, may may be doing it, but like I said I'm, I'm playing with those fire starting kits. I'm trying something different, and I know I'm onto something. I'm just trying to fine tune it. <laughs>
What are you throwing? So yeah, that's, that's what I use this wax for. And you, but like I said, you can use it for all kinds of things. Uh, that's just what I've been no normally using it for. No, I hate you. Yeah, and these little guys. It's just the fuses. Not fuses. <laughs> this ain't fireworks. Uh, the wicks. There we go. Yeah. You almost passed it again. This is almost done. Like I said, if you do plan on saving the glass jars, uh, you want to set them on something that's like I don't want to set them on this table because this table's wet from the rain that we had last night. Uh, so I don't want to set them on this because I know it'll it's a lot colder. It's a lot colder, so Becky, come on. Yeah, it's a lot colder, so I don't want to uh, sit it on there and then cr uh, they'll, they'll they crack. Find so I'm just sitting them over here on the no. on the AC to let it. them cool down over there. Cause that that steals. I mean, it's cold, colder, of course, but it's not crazy colder. Yeah, that's the way I do them. So it's kind of a double, double whammy on this video. Becky, I said I just feared I. And got off. Okay, Becky. right about there. Um, over here somewhere. Huh? Uh, maybe I put a little bit too much in that. No, that's a little warm. But yeah, the reason why I put them in this, uh, whoop, hold on. Yeah, the reason why I put them in the, these, uh, metal cans, so that, whenever I do go ahead and do the, yeah, be about right, I think. So that whenever I go to do more of these, I'll go ahead and do the fire starting kits or whatever. I can just bring it right back outside. I can bring it outside and put it on top of there and not have to worry about it melting. And that way it's it's done. Oh, I need to get another one on there. And I said I don't have to worry about I if I put it in plastic, I won't have to worry about it melting. I don't like doing it inside. But so that's why I do it out here. Yeah, I sure hope you guys understood the knife deal and explain with me explaining it the best I could best I could best I could, could explain it what is what is ah yeah so yeah it uh yeah with me explaining that I sure hope you guys understand that uh, at least to be able to determine the difference between them and uh, another deal. Oh, excuse me. Like these bigger ones, even these bigger ones, you gotta watch out for. And this one I'm gonna be changing up. This is that large tracker knife I have. But this one here, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be rehandling here in the near future. So watch out for that video on my page. Uh, but like I said, in the near future, I'll be redoing this. Uh, you see, there is nothing except for this one bolt up here. This nut, I mean. Except for that, there's nothing here showing where the tang is. So, what I'm going to end up doing is taking this apart. And I'll probably end up either using the different uh, different scales, or I'm just going to take this and cut it down the middle and reuse this handle. And I'm going to weld on a uh, piece here. And reshape and shape it to the shape it to the handle, and put this back on and reassemble it. But it's I know, mom shut it. 
uh, and reshape it to that and be uh, be able to use it because if you've seen the my video about this whenever I was actually doing a review on it uh, the handle I mean, even now you can see it move uh, this glory anyways and the handle which causes the handle handle to move so I'm pretty sure it's just a p long piece of all thread running through this handle so I want to get rid of that and put actually put a plate there and weld it on and make it stronger uh, Make it stronger to where it can actually take some abuse. So at this point, it's, it doesn't take much. It only took uh, a, a few uses, and this handle was loose. So I'm going to uh, completely redo it. And like I said, watch out for that. I want to watch. I want to make a video so, uh, on it. So watch out for it in the near future, because this is this is going to be my next project that I do is rehandling this. So. Uh, just thought I'd, uh, do a double whammy on this, so, uh, I will be doing a, I will be doing a couple of small, a uh, couple of reviews as well on some folders. I got a couple here I'll be doing, uh, on this, uh, CRKT and this Gerber here, mini, uh, mini butcher, so. I'll be doing a review of that on those here before long as well. So it may not be today, so uh, I'll probably do one more and I'm going to do a video first. One more deal. So, like I said, these, this wax has a lot, a lot of uses. It can be used for quite a, quite a few things. Yeah, and way back when, I think it was like the 19, whoop, uh, like the 1940s and older, I think, uh, they had actually used wax on, uh, boxes and paper and whatnot, fight fight like vehicles, they had used it on that, uh, a, uh, wax co coating, I don't know if it was like wax paper or stuff like this, just simple wax. They had used it way back when to seal it all and help uh, help keep it uh, from degrading. And I had seen a guy uh, on, a, on a video that he was redoing this. Well, what was it? 1940s or 50s? Uh, early 1900s vehicle and all the parts that he was getting from it uh, for it were still in the original package packaging from that era and they were all cardboard boxes with a wax uh, well yeah with a wax wax coating and uh, and whenever he took the box apart to get be able to access the, the parts, uh, they were in pristine condition, and uh, as if they came off the line the day before. And but but they were dated to the I said the early 1900s, and I'm actually surprised that that company. Uh, have kept him that long. I said, like I said, I think it was like an international or something, international or Chevy, Ford, one of those three. So yeah, it, this this wax paper, uh, this wax. If you want to try to seal something up and preserve it. This would be it would be a very good way of doing it. I went and sit, John John's inside. He's going he's going to be coming back out here shortly. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using this on like pictures or anything like that, but you can do it in like uh, do it put it on like envelopes or boxes or anything like that, and it'll seal it up. 
As long as the temperature for this was that one thing I did find out the hard way, but inadvertent though. If if you have this exposed to extreme heat, like say if you uh, did it for uh, fire starting kits and you left it in your truck during the summer, uh, like for the summer heat, it, it will it will uh, melt that wax right off of it. And it'll be sitting down there in the bottom of the container. So you don't want to, you don't want to expose this to extreme heat, obviously. But even if you, I like, just simply put it in a vehicle during the summer, it will just, it'll melt it, guaranteed. And sometimes this takes a little while to do. I don't mind it. Probably end up getting tired of me talking at this point. <laughs> How long have we been rolling? Anyhow. Oh, a good 20 minutes. So. This one's just about done. I got two more of these big ones and six of these small ones to do, so. I'll be out here for a little bit. I'll be shutting it. I'll be shutting the camera off here soon. So you ain't gotta watch all of it if you've even made it this far. It's not quite there yet, but I can get these other two. Fire trucks or ambulances. Oh, I wonder what happened. Going towards the uh, nursing homes down there. I think they're going down to one of the nursing homes down there. And two ambulances. Do what? Melting the wax. Milking the wax. Melting. Oh yeah, melting it. So. No. All right. So yeah, it's that's an ambulance. Ambulance. Shut it. <laughs> it's not a fire truck. No. No. It's a fire truck. No. Well, not all of that one truck. melted out. But yeah. That's the way I do them. So. Oh, hey, honey. Uh, I'm staying inside. I get this other one going, yeah. another one going, and I'll okay. get set up with the video verse. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this video verse is going to be back in 1 Timothy, and this is going to be chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. It says, I am writing these things to you now, even though I hope to be with you soon. So if I am delayed, you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in a human body and vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations he was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. Now as 1 Timothy 1 Timothy, <laughs> chapter 3, 14 through 16. I will see you in the next one.